Hello, my name is Katie O'Dair, and I'm the Associate Dean for Graduate Student Life at Boston College. Welcome to Veritas at Beenham. Veritas at Beenham is a conversation series that features prominent faculty and administrators sharing their stories, how they began their careers in higher education, the people and events that had an impact on their professional development, and what it means to them personally to work at a Jesuit and Catholic university. Archived conversations can be viewed at the Church in the 21st Century Center website. Thank you, and enjoy the conversations. I think it was in the fall I was uh, asked if I would have time out of my busy, busy schedule uh, to be here this afternoon uh, to talk about myself. And I have to say that was an invitation that was very uh, easy to, uh, to accept. So I am, I am delighted to be here. I don't that's not that often you're uh, invited to talk about your own story. So uh, you, you will hear it today. You know, it was exactly a, a year ago uh, this month that I was being recruited to be Dean of um, the College and Graduate School of Arts and Sciences here and was coming for various uh, stages of uh, interviews. You know, at the time I was flattered to be considered for the position, but I never imagined that I would actually come here because I was uh, very happy uh, at the University of South Carolina where I was chair of the history department. Moreover, my wife and family loved Columbia, where we had been for nine years. And uh, even more important, my wife and I have 18-year-old identical twin boys who are now seniors in high school. And so last year, the thought of either taking them out of high school in their last year, uh, or me living alone, was really uh, both were unthinkable. So uh, it's a year later. Uh, <laughs> here I am uh, living alone, uh, <laughs> at least until June, when my wife and, and boys will join me. Uh, I say that to, of course, on the one hand, elicit a little bit of sympathy from you, <laughs> but also to indicate that there, there had to be a, sort of a real powerful pull uh, to Boston College. This was not an easy or automatic move for me. There was something that drew me here. And what that something was, uh, I'll talk about in a little while. Um, I'm going to be, I'm, to start off, kind of like the, the political, the presidential candidates now, uh, kind of telling you uh, their personal stories. My wife, Elaine, and I were born and raised in uh, Wisconsin. In the late 1960s, uh, we attended a branch of the University of Wisconsin. Uh, and for me, college was a, a life-changing experience. Now, it wouldn't be quite ac accurate to say that I was the first in my immediate family to graduate from college, but very close to it. Um, my mom and I graduated on the same day. I was, I was not the same person coming out of college that I was going into, going into it. And it was really because of the experience that I had that I decided almost literally at the last moment uh, to become a, a teacher myself. Uh, for four years, I was a pre-med major and also working at as, a, at a, as an orderly in a hospital. And in the uh, first semester of my senior year, as I was applying to medical school, I also applied to graduate school um, in history and eventually went to, went to graduate school in uh, history. Um, I'm going to come back and talk a little bit more about uh, my college experience and what happened to me because it really is relevant to my decision to come to Boston College. I went to graduate school uh, at the University of Maryland, and I studied modern American political history. Uh, my most uh, recent book was a biography of uh, Franklin Roosevelt, and I write right now, although I'm not making a whole lot of progress on it, I have a contract to write a book on the Clinton presidency, 
and at least until recently, uh, people used to say, well, which Clinton presidency? But I, I'm, I, it's looking more and more likely that there were probably just one Clinton presidency, but it's not, it's not over yet. Um, following graduate school, I, I worked in politics in the Wisconsin State uh, Senate. I had studied politics uh, for six years in graduate school, and now I wanted to get some kind of practical experience. And it was a wonderful experience for me. Uh, the work I did in, in Madison, Wisconsin, really informed both my sub subsequent scholarship and the book I wrote on Franklin Roosevelt. I mean, it really is a different book because of what I learned about politics at the kind of the grassroots level. But also, working in politics um, uh, shaped the way I, the, I approach administration. I don't think uh, hardly a day goes by, but what I don't draw on some of the experiences I had in Madison. Now, my academic colleagues have never really believed this over the years, but the, the, the uh, truth is one of the lessons I learned from politics is that um, usually the best politics is no politics. And in truth, I have seen more of what people think of as politics in an academic setting than I actually saw in real politics. Well, I was trained as a historian and a teacher, and so when in 1980, when the opportunity presented itself uh, and a job opened up at Tulane University in New Orleans, uh, we, we moved to New Orleans. And I taught um, at Tulane for 18 years and ended up as chair of the history department. In 1998, uh, I was uh, approached to be chair of the history department at the University of South Carolina. And my reaction then was the same as I described upon being approached by Boston College. We loved New Orleans. I loved my colleagues and students and my family, really, and I loved New Orleans. But it was the challenge that drew me to South Carolina, and especially the, the opportunity to help shape an institution that was headed in the right direction. I also should say that another attraction going to, to South Carolina was that going from a, a, a pretty elite, uh, private, well-heeled school to a big, diverse public university in a poor state where, where a college degree for most of the students I had at South Carolina really was the difference between success in life and, and not success. And so I felt in some ways for those, uh, those years, uh, nine years, I mean, I sort of felt more needed than I had been before. Uh, until coming here, uh, the years in South Carolina were the most rewarding years of my professional career. Uh, I, I, we, I helped attract as chair uh, some of the most uh, diverse and talented historians in the country. And we got more attention in those years, the history department did, than any history department in the country. I was more, um, I think I was proudest of helping di to diversify the department, uh, both along racial and, and gender lines. And I think in the 21st century, we really owe our students diversity. And so that's actually one of my goals here at Boston College. Well, I know, I still haven't told you uh, how I ended up here, and I'm, 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 getting, I'm getting to that. Uh, Several reasons. Uh, when, when I, as I learned more about uh, Boston College, I was enormously impressed by what had happened here before, the accomplishments. I mean, I read Newsweek, which listed Boston College as one of the, one of the new Ivies, and I saw the U.S. News and World Report that had Boston College tied 30, 34th, I think, with, with my home institution, the, the University of uh, Wisconsin. Um, but that wasn't you know, that, that, wasn't, uh, that wasn't enough. Uh, I think uh, uh, an even greater attraction to Boston College was this dual commitment to academic excellence and the unfettered search for the truth, but also to service and social justice. And all universities nowadays, including the University of South Carolina and Tulane before that, talk about service, and there's a lot of service learning that goes on, 
But often I think it's a line on a resume, something to kind of enhance one's career possibilities. Here, it seemed to me that service and the goal of social justice was really sort of part of this institution's DNA. And it's part of my DNA as well. Uh, another and I think related attraction for me at Boston College was uh, this, the goal of educating the whole person, uh, as the intellectual and, and spiritual sides of our nature. I mean, I know that can sound kind of like a, a cliche, but it did really, um, uh, it really did touch something in me. And now let me go back to college. Uh, uh, that was what was most important about um, my college experience, was kind of an education of the whole person. You know, I hadn't, I, before coming here, I don't know that I'd ever heard this word formation, student formation in about an academic, in an academic setting. But what happened to me in college was formation, or maybe sort of a better word, self-formation, or reformation. Um, and let me explain uh, what, I, what I mean. The history courses that I took really challenged a lot of the values and attitudes and assumptions that I had. I mean, about you know, the role of the United States in history and a lot of other things. Uh, and I got thinking, you know, this, this, uh, the, the country, a lot of the ideas I had were not really historically valid. Now, now this is the 1960s, so the civil rights movement and the war in Vietnam had, had a lot to do with that as well. Uh, but um, other courses I took as a pre-med major and as a historian challenged a lot of the, the kind of religious beliefs and values that I had held, you know, sort of unthinkingly. Uh, my wife and I were both products of, of Catholic um, education. Um, both of us went to Catholic schools from kindergarten uh, through high school. And I tell people, back in these, those days, when I was in grade school, uh, we went to mass um, every single day, 8 o'clock mass, every, every single day, you know, all throughout the school year. So if um, somebody's keeping a tally on uh, mass attendance, I think I can, I've got a lot, I think of this on a Sunday, I mean, I have a lot to draw on. I've got a lot, <laughs> lot in the bank if it, if, it really, if it really counts for something. Uh, in any, anyway, just as the history courses kind of challenged my views about the United States and sort of some, of some of my political and social assumptions, so what I was studying in history and, and, and science challenged a lot of the kind of religious beliefs that I had grown up with. I remember in a, the um, ancient and medieval history course I had, I was sort of shaken to find out that, um, you know, about all the kind of pagan and other religions that shared what I had always thought were central um, ideas to uh, Christianity and Catholicism. I thought, you know, this, isn't, this, this is something, I didn't know this, and I was a little concerned about it. Moreover, um, when I, in, in the history courses, uh, when I learned about these, just, uh, the support of the Catholic Church for slavery, for, for many centuries, or its um, ambiguous role uh, in Germany during the 1930s and 1940s. Similarly, the science courses, um, you know, I was a science major um, and studied comparative anatomy and chemistry, and, and those also challenged some of my views. And the, these were a lot of things that, um, you know, the, the, uh, the sisters that I had had in grade school and the both Christian brothers and a year of Jesuits that I had in high school, they didn't tell me. They didn't tell me these things. So, you know, I was thinking through all these uh, again and sort of my doubt, my, my beliefs uh, wavered. They were put under, under challenge. Well, by the end of it, though, I have to say, you know, I think I emerged from, from college sort of a more integrated person. I mean, my views had been challenged, and then I, they sort of, I was rebuilding them, rethinking them. And some of the things I had believed in, um, I discarded. I thought, you know, they were, they were without foundation. Other things became firmer beliefs. 
And you know, this was, I mean, I went to a public uh, school, uh, but I was also very active in uh, my church during this time. And that's kind of the, it was this, this was education of the whole person and challenging the whole person. And it was for me a really ideal education and it's been my model ever since. Uh, from the, the time I began teaching, I have sought as a historian to challenge my students to rethink their assumptions and values. And at the beginning of every course I've ever taught, I always start out by saying that one of the, one of the uh, um, benefits of a history course is that it does force you, when you, you know, look at uh, that other societies and other times, it does force you to rethink your own values and, and, and opinions and beliefs. And I'll tell students, look, your, I, your, your beliefs may well be true, but they really have come from up to this point, probably come from your parents or your peers. Uh, they are not your own. You, you, don't almost, you don't have a right to them until you really question them and think about them. In fact, I don't think any beliefs are, are really yours or valid unless they have been challenged. I think, I think doubt, I don't think you can have a true faith without doubt. But that's part of, uh, you know, sort of intellectually and in every other way, that's what happened to me in college. And that is what I have been trying to recreate for my students ever since, but in secular institutions. So here, Boston College comes on the scene. And I read about formation. And I'm thinking, this is what Boston College is doing, but it's more upfront about it. You know, and that was, I think, ultimately what seemed to me really the, the great, the core of this institution and what brought me here. And I should say another thing, I mean, it maybe sounds to somebody who's not familiar with this place, it, it would sound strange to say that here is a place where you're going to really challenge, you're going to get people to sort of create doubts in people about their beliefs and their attitudes. But I think that's what we do here. And I, I think it's because we're more upfront, it's part of our mission, formation, that it's kind of easier to do here. Um, one of the, uh, it, was, it was not really a surprise to me, but I think it's been a surprise to people who have asked me about this. I think in a sense there, is, there may be more kind of what people would think of as academic freedom in this kind of an institution, in a Catholic Jesuit institution, than there is in other, in other institutions. Because here, you're there, no question is out of bounds. You're sort of expected to surround it from all sides. So uh, anyway, that's, that is my story. Um, that is my odyssey. Um, and I'm, I'm, really, I'm really thrilled to be here. And again, in some ways, have this feeling that I was kind of fated to, as in a later stage of my career, to be at a place like Boston College, which again just sort of resonates with, with everything that, um, every experience I've had up to this point.